Alright guys, uh, Slowjet here from NEFPB. Just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about a quick easy way to depin X4R or D4R or really anything, you know, even a NAS32 or any kind of um, anything with pins in it. Really quick way to depin stuff. So there's a product here called uh, ChipQuick. Um, you get it on Amazon, it comes with some flux and uh, the ChipQuick material, which is like a brittle solder and an alcohol bunch of alcohol pads which are kind of handy. Um, so we're going to turn this X4R into an X4R like this. Completely depinned. They have these uh, nifty awesome little cases on them. Get rid of that. Normally you would use the included flux and uh, just dab on all these pins. But there's already some flux on the X4R uh, from the factory so I'm just going to Grab the chip quick and go to town. So the first thing we're gonna do is take your soldering iron here and get the chip quick spread out on the pins. You don't need that much of it. The bridge is pretty easy. Just want to get all on all the pins. All right. And then once you get a little bit on all the pins, you're gonna grab your removal tool ready. I'm going to come through here and heat up all the pins. So the flux is flowing. And then just grab your pins and pull them out. Done. And you can uh, wipe this stuff away. Try not to get any of the chip quick on any of these resistors or anything around here. And now, as you can see, the board actually came out um, fairly clean. Not a lot of stuff all over it. Um, so now we can clean up all these pins here. And this is where uh, I always sometimes, I mean, I know these solder braids are supposed to have um, some flux on them. But I find that if I grab the chip quick flux and I put a little on the braid, the braid works about 300 times better. And I'm just touching it with not putting a ton on there. Just a little bit. And then I'll come over and lay the braid down. You want to get all the stuff off your soldering iron when you do it. Lay the braid down on the area you want to desolder, and you'll see the, the flux kind of roll, and it clears the pinholes pretty good. Once again, be careful not to get flux, I mean, not to get, uh, not to desolder any of the things around the, um, around the holes you're working on. So cleared a lot of the solder off. Um, and the best way I've found to remove the remaining solder from these holes is to use a solder sucker. So what I'm going to do is again, get your iron pretty clean so that it's shiny on the end or else you won't have good results. I'm going to set my solder sucker. I do it by pushing this thing down and then I release it like that. So I'm going to go with this hole right here. I'm just going to stick my iron in this hole for a second. I'm going to go like that and it just clears the hole. I'm going to be uh, actually squeezing this onto a uh, a flight controller, like making a sandwich, basically. What I mean by uh, sandwich is I'm going to I'm going to make a I'm going to attach the flight controller through the pins to this uh, to this X4R, uh, and this is going to go on my U bad katana. So what I'll do is I'll match the middle pins which are the ground on here the top middle pins the top row of pins on the flight controller and then I'm going to 
pick up the 5 volts with the second row and do that. Then I'm going to just grab the S bus out on here and bring it to the flight controller. So that way we have a very thin, um, very thin profile on this guy. And I'm going to mount the board actually upside down and backwards. So it's a nice quick way to get a clean install.